This is the eighth episode in a 30-part series providing an ecological overview of the insect orders. This episode will cover earwigs, insects of the order Dermaptera. This is an order with a surprising amount of depth and beauty. Before we begin, we need to understand these insects do not actively crawl in ears, despite their common name. The name actually originates from the myth, but I can assure you that there's no credibility to it. That being said, these insects do like to enter dark, moist, cave-like areas similar to human ears, which may have caused the myth when it maybe happened once or twice a few hundred years ago. However, there have been no known cases of earwigs causing ear damage, so you have nothing to worry about. These insects exist worldwide, except for the continent of Antarctica. Their largest representative has actually gone extinct in the last 100 years due to human influence through habitat destruction and pest introduction. It was the St. Helena earwig, found only on the island of St. Helena, and it could grow up to 8 centimeters in length. These insects don't get very big, which is partly why they need such intimidating large forceps to dissuade predators. These insects are very old in evolutionary history, although not quite as old as cockroaches. The strong grasping forceps of the earwigs have existed for 200 million years, quite unchanged. The order name of earwigs is Dermaptera, which comes from the Greek words derma meaning skin and terra, meaning wings, loosely translating to skin wings. This refers to the leathery, often hardened forewings, or tegmina, that protect the hindwings, a feature many of the Neoptera possess. This may seem similar to beetles, but it's different, because the beetle's elytra covers the entire body. Though earwigs possess functional wings, most are poor flyers, and prefer to scuttle along the ground. They are primarily nocturnal and exhibit behaviors uncommon among other insects, including maternal care. These insects are generalists, similar to cockroaches, but there are a few key differences of note which have shaped them differently. Number one, diet. Cockroaches will eat just about anything, whereas earwigs are quite a bit more picky. Both insects will eat plant matter, animal matter, and are considered omnivores, detritivores, and a whole host of other things. But when it's coming down to exactly what they can eat, cockroaches have a greater microbiome and thus can eat more things. Number two, cockroaches can live in many environments, whereas earwigs prefer humid, secluded places where they can hide. Both like places they can hide but cockroaches tend to move around a lot, whereas earwigs stay in the same spot until the food runs out. Number three, cockroaches reproduce quickly and excessively, whereas earwigs are more modest in their reproduction, but actually exhibit parental care and will do so until the young are ready to go off on their own. Cockroaches sometimes exhibit parental care, but other times not at all and some species will even cannibalize their own young. There is a lot of variation, and it is very species dependent with regards to parental care. So keep that in mind going forward. Number four, cockroaches are tough and often larger than earwigs, but they are not fighters and will run away should conflict arise. Earwigs are quite a bit more tougher and will fight back using their posterior forceps if need be. Basically, cockroaches are better at being nomadic, opportunistic generalists, whereas earwigs are better at maintaining the environment they are already in. Among generalists, cockroaches are the squatters who are always late on rent and will leave you if you threaten to call the police. Earwigs are the well-meaning tenants that actually furnish the place and make it a home. Cockroaches feed, reproduce, and then run away. Earwigs hunker down, raise a family, and then fight to protect them. 
Now let's look at some general internal and external anatomy features. On the external anatomy, perhaps the most distinguishing characteristic of earwigs is their large pincer-like cerci at the rear of their abdomen. These are sexually dimorphic. Males tend to have curved, larger cerci, while females have straight ones. These structures serve multiple purposes, including defense, prey capture, and mating interactions. They often use them to fight other males for territory, and they're also used for defense as much as they are offense. The tegmina of the earwig, or hardened forewings, unlike beetles, whose elytra fully encases the hindwings, earwigs have short leathery tegmina that partially cover their folded hindwings. Beetles possess their elytra primarily for defense. Tegmina are also for defense, but they are noticeably smaller and more flexible, meant more to protect the wings than the entire length of the body, as in most beetles. Under these tegmina, earwigs possess intricate fan-like hind wings. These wings can unfurl to nearly 10 times their surface area when extended, but they are rarely used, as earwigs generally want to stay where they are. Earwigs have thread-like antenna, which are generally long and segmented, and these aid in sensing humidity and other environmental cues. Lastly, their long, elongated, flexible bodies are adapted for maneuverability in tight spaces such as bark crevices and leaf litter. The internal anatomy of the earwig is similar to a cockroach's, but different. Depending on the species, earwigs may be herbivorous, omnivorous, or predatory, and many consume detritus, fungi, plant matter, and small invertebrates, and it all depends on what microhabitat they're suited for. So now that we know all this, what eats earwigs? Well, despite their formidable cerci, they're preyed upon by a variety of organisms, including birds, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and other arthropods. By being generalist insects, they exist in many environments, and so compete with other insects and arthropods for food and shelter, especially in humid microhabitats, such as leaf litter, under bark, and in soil crevices. Despite this, their unique evolutionary traits have kept them relevant, as they are in somewhat of an awkward spot. They need to compete with isopods, cockroaches, ants, and other ground-dwelling arthropods by being selective with what they eat, selective with the way they live, and ready to know when to fight and when to nurture. Here are several unique characteristics earwigs possess in this effort. Number one, maternal care. As stated before, earwigs are among the few non-social insects that provide parental care. Females lay eggs in underground burrows and guard them against predators, fungi, and desiccation. Even after hatching, nymphs remain under the mother's protection for several molts, being fed regurgitated food in some species. She will not hunt food and bring it back in solid form, however. She will simply regurgitate it, similar to a penguin. This maternal care that extends not just past the eggs, but even to after the young hatch, and even until they are adult enough to fend for themselves, is something truly unique to earwigs and is likely the most advanced form of parental care apart from eusociality found in the insect kingdom. Number two, their forceps like cerci are often used to ward predators, grasp prey, and engage in mating displays or competition. These are multifaceted tools and are useful not just because of the strength of their pinch, but their sheer size and intimidation factor. They get larger and more gnarly looking after each molt in relation to body size. Thus, the larger the earwig is, the more intimidating the forceps. Lastly, their folded hind wings, despite being used rarely, are some of the most intricately folded wings in the insect world, which is a feature that allows them to maintain their streamlined body shape. They have them like this specifically because they don't use them very often, and most of the time they get in the way when the earwig is trying to squeeze in and out of tight spaces, which it often does. These wings are spring-loaded, and they don't fold because of inherent musculature, 
that is, no muscle actively folds and unfolds them like in other insects. Rather, they are pleated and the memory of the fold is enough for them to retain their shape properly. This is quite literally the same as origami. One more additional note is that most earwigs are nocturnal. This is to avoid predators, avoid drying out, and aid in scavenging behavior. Earwigs are essential players in many ecosystems, particularly due to their feeding habits. Their presence helps regulate populations of smaller invertebrates, while also contributing to decomposition and nutrient cycling. These are the types of microhabitats they usually live in, which, unlike cockroaches, they won't typically leave until the food runs out or some other catastrophe occurs, which is usually when their wings come out. So, where do earwigs fit in among insects? You wouldn't think it, because earwigs are generally much less reviled than cockroaches, but they pretty much do almost exactly the same thing. The only key difference is that earwigs are optimized to be territorial, whereas cockroaches are optimized to be nomadic. This one seemingly small change actually makes all the difference in the world with these generalists and has translated to all the adaptations you see in both of these groups today. Earwigs approach survival in an intuitive, risk-averse way, and even have a few surprises up their sleeves. I personally love these insects, as to me they feel like effective and satisfied product design. Everything from their colors to their iconic shape. The story of this insect just makes sense. It is one of the insect kingdom's most practical, designs, both in mechanics and behaviors. They are truly a special insect if you take a close-up look. Thanks for watching this episode of Privileged Bug Facts. Be sure to stay tuned for more bug content. Thanks.